So welcome to lesson seven of the ecology unit of work for your GCSE combined science and um, lesson seven is all about biodiversity. And biodiversity, as you'll see, is the variety of all the different species of organisms on Earth or within an ecosystem. That is the keyword definition that we are going to be exploring in depth today. So to begin with, as ever, review back over your previous notes of your previous lessons, um, any available revision resources you've got, stop the video now, have a go at these knowledge check questions, and then come back to the video for the answers in a moment. Right, should have unpaused the video, so if we remind ourselves of some of the different answers here. Define ecosystem. Ecosystem is the interaction between living and non-living parts of an environment define interdependence interdependence is species relying on one another for resources for survival resources for survival state three things that plants compete for could be any of space light water co2 in our previous lessons what are the three types of adaptations we've discussed behavioral structural and functional involving processes like photosynthesis. State what the arrows represent in a food chain. They represent the transfer of energy between organisms. Define an extremophile. It's an organism that lives in extreme conditions. What do we measure biomass in? Biomass is measured in grams per meter squared. And what do we define extinction as? If you remember, we define it as the total loss of a species. Good. Well done. Right. If you've done that, if you want to then turn over onto your next page and we'll start to look at what we mean by the term biodiversity. Right, so at the top of the page, as you see, there's an instruction straight away, which says, watch the following clip and on your student's notes page, make your own notes as to what biodiversity is and why it's important that it's maintained. So that's your first task. Stop the video in your resources, get the YouTube link open. Use the um, link in the comments below or any of the PDFs or things like that your teacher might have sent you. And watch this and make some notes on what biodiversity is and why it's important. Once we've done that, we'll go into it in a little bit more depth. So now you should have unpaused the video and let's dive into the text in a bit more depth. So, starting at the top here. In order for ecosystems and the earth to remain stable, there needs to be a good level of biodiversity which is the variety of different species of organisms within an environment or an ecosystem. Good, great biodiversity ensures the stability of an ecosystem. Now, question is, why? Different species are interdependent and help to maintain the cor correct physical environment for each other. In a diverse ecosystem, there's more likely to be more than one species providing the same resources or conditions, e.g. feeding other species, eating other species, or providing suitable habitats. So that's the key point. Huh. 
high biodiversity reduces the dependence of species on each other for survival. So for example, it might allow a species to have multiple food sources rather than just one. Good. So this means a species is less likely to rely on a single species for survival. The human species relies on many different species supplying us with resources and so biodiversity is essential and vital to our survival. So, it's important that these areas are recognised. Now, these areas are important and we might see them labelled as biodiversity hotspots. And a biodiversity hotspot is where there is a high concentration of plant and animal life and often it's defined as when a especially when you might have over 1500 endemic vascular plants so a vascular plant is a plant that has roots, stems, leaves, as we know. An endemic is centred to that place. It belongs to that particular area. Now, the important thing we have to consider are factors that affect biodiversity. So, reduction of biodiversity can affect climate, food supplies, and availability of useful chemicals for the future. Unfortunately, the biggest threat to global biodiversity is human activity. Lots of human actions, lots of human actions, including waste production, food production, and deforestation, are all contributing to rapid decreases in habitat and species populations. So, for example, food production destroys habitats. Where does the beef burger? Um, the beef in the beef burger in your McDonald's burger come from? Comes from, for example, cattle that are grazed on large swathes of um, rainforest areas and places like that that have been chopped down to make space for the cattle to graze. And then, as we've talked about before, the chopping down of trees and habitats for things like this contributes, contributes to global warming and climate change. Because there is more CO2 left in the atmosphere. Because there are less trees and plants to take it in. Now, when the human population was smaller, these effects were uh, small too and only had a local impact. Today, as the human population increases beyond 7 billion, pressure on the environment is now more widespread than ever as we take more resources for survival. Throughout history, there has been mass extinction events and natural extinction of species enduring thousands of years. Now, remember, what does this term mean? Extinction? Total species loss. Now extinction is now happening within tens of years and such rapid loss of species is significantly reducing biodiversity. Reductions in biodiversity affect climate as we've said, food availability and air quality. Humans must take actions to stop damage to the ecosystems ensure biodiversity is maintained. Now if I had a little look at that, two tasks. 
first one. Stop the video again and have a look at this clip that's in the comments section be on your resources. Watch the clip and note, make notes on how biodiversity can be maintained. So what I'd like you to do briefly now, once you've done that, and pause the video and had a go, is just turn to your notes page for this lesson. And you just want to go over a couple of these points themselves to highlight what the video said and what we need to be aware of when we are talking about the maintenance of biodiversity and also how humans affect it. Now, first things first. What can cause habitat loss? Things that can cause habitat loss. Might have seen mentioned or can think of. Fires and floods. More cattle grazing expan expansion of agricultural land. Timber harvesting, deforestation. Mentioned that too. Livestock grazing, yeah, we'll add that in here. It's part of agricultural land. Um, things like dam building. Which breaks up habitats. And then we can also talk about things like, as we've talked about before, introduction of invasive species. Competitors. Then, when we're talking about maintenance of biodiversity, ideas you might have picked up from the video. Breeding programs, so breeding endangered species. Protection of habitats. For example, making them into things like national parks that can't be built on. Um, importantly, in agricultural land, if you reintroduce hedgerows, hedges are great areas for different organisms to grow because they provide a diverse habitat. Thinking about the Amazon rainforest and things like that, government policies to reduce deforestation. And also CO2 emissions. You might have had thinking about what we can do on a practical level, recycling as opposed to putting things into landfill. So you've got several different things that you can think about there and some just good notes there for your notes page. If you turn back to where we left off, and we just need to think a little bit more about the impact of environmental change. So let's go through the paragraph. As we know, the abiotic factors of an ecosystem have significant impact on the organisms within the ecosystem. Environmental factors such as water availability, temperature or atmospheric gases may differ due to the time of year, season of the geographical location of the ecosystem. Changes may also result of human interaction with the ecosystem. Such changes cannot affect 
can affect not only the distribution and abundance of species, but also their presence within the ecosystem. So, abiotic factors. We know are non-living. So non-living factors such as water availability and temperature and also atmospheric gases. So if you think about things like water availability and temperature. Floods and droughts. And how are atmospheric gases changed? They're changed by pollution. They may differ time of year, season, geographic location, and they can also result as a human interaction, so especially pollution. Now, such changes can not only affect the distribution. What do we mean by the term distribution? We mean the spread of species and the abundance, the amount of species. So where they are and how many of them are, but also their presence within the ecosystem. So their actual very survival changes in these abiotic factors can occur. Um, can cause. So many species populations are affected by wet and dry seasons, drought and flooding, less water means fewer organisms, many animals migrate and move to different areas according to rainfall patterns. Animals also migrate in response to changes in temperature throughout the year, birds flying to hotter and cooler countries dependent on the seasons. Increased temperatures may increase certain populations while decreasing others. Distribution Changes in the air, for example, some species cannot grow in areas with high levels of pollution. So, we've gone through quite a bit of information there. Now, can you have a go at applying it, please? So, pause the video and have a look at the checkpoint question and see if you can use your notes to answer it and then unpause the video and come back to it once um, you've had a go. So, as it says, scientists have suggested that deforestation may lead to an increase in worldwide rate of photosynthesis of plants. Suggest how this conclusion may have been reached. Now, plants, deforestation. Deforestation is slightly different. Chopping down of trees. Chopping down of trees may lead to an increased worldwide rate of photosynthesis in plants. So it's treating them as separate organisms. Now, suggest how might lead to an increased rate of worldwide photosynthesis. Now, if we think about it, we've got more CO2 because of less trees. Now, more CO2 in the atmosphere is going to do what to global temperatures? It's going to increase global temperatures. Now, if you've got an increase in temperature, temperature affects the rate of photosynthesis. So a higher temperature up to a point will increase the rate of photosynthesis in remaining plants. So as you can see it links what you know from bioenergetics and photosynthesis to this idea of deforestation affecting CO2 levels. Right, another task I'd like to have a go at now, if you have a look at the next section. There's some data given about global human population over the last thousand years. And at, you've got that data on that page. And as you'll see on the next page, there is some tasks I'd like to have a go at doing. So, 
you've got the data and simply you need to plot the data on a graph and answer some questions about it. So pause the video, have a go at that task independently, and then we will go back through it in a moment. Right, should have unpaused the video, so let's go through this task together. So what we have got along the side of our graph should be our number of people. Down the bottom, we've got our year. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 12, 13, 14 years. So if we break this up, let's start at 1,012. 14, 16, 18, 20, 22. Let's go on twos. Um, 1,012, 14, 16, 18, 2,000, 2,020. Good. So let's plot in our axes now. I hope you're using the ruler for this. I haven't got one to hand, so you'll have to bear with me. But um, zero. And we're just going to put a little like that so we can jump off our axes. Then we're going to put 1,000, 1,200, 1,400, 1,600, 1,800, 2,000, 2,200, like so. Then up the side, we go to 6. Well, maybe even seven. Go one, two, quite one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Let's go up in ones. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we'll go one, two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it's a number of people in billions. Now, as we've got decimal points, it's not going to be the easiest thing to plot, but we'll plot it the best we can. So, one thousand, uh, year thousand, at 0 0.3. Not much change for year 1,200, 1,400 about. Same 1600, we get up to about halfway, 1800, we get up to about a billion, and then the year 2000, we get up to just over six billion. Now, you should hopefully have a pencil that you're drawing a line of best fit, and as you can see in science. That bottom line's the best fit, it can be straight or curved, and a curved line of best fit would be most appropriate here. Like so. So we've got a basic graph. Now, the question you're asking is what the graph says. Describe the trend in data between the year 1000 and 1800. Population numbers stay relatively stable. Roughly around the same amount. Describe the trend in data between 1800 and 2000. Population numbers increase at a steep rate, almost exponentially. Now suggest a reason for the change between 1800 and 2000. Might be because you've got improvements in technology and healthcare leading to more successful reproduction and also living for longer. Now, 
Now, if we we're going to predict the line of best fit, we might sort of say roughly about here, 2020. So about 6.5 billion. But I think in world population numbers, it might have increased even more than that. So it might have increased at an even greater rate. That's the idea of what we're trying to get you to do there. So your last task now is to take what you've done and have a look at it, review your notes, and have a go at the knowledge and application questions at the end of this lesson just to try and confirm all the facts that you've managed to pick up. So pause the video now and have a go at the questions and we'll go through the answers on that to finish. Right, you should have unpaused the video. So let's go through the answers to finish. Define migrate. So migration is when animals move environment in response to an environmental change. Define extinction. I've done this before. Total species loss. So deforestation, how does it affect climate change? So less trees gives more CO2 in the atmosphere. More radiation is trapped, which equals an increase in temperatures. Good. Explain how humans affect biodiversity. So, deforestation, an example, can decrease biodiversity, and that is a human effect. How do the seasons affect biodiversity? Seasons can cause species to migrate into and out of areas. which can affect their biodiversity. Name three abiotic factors that can affect biodiversity. Light, temperature, and water. These are all non-living factors that can affect the ability of species to live within the environment. What's the current population? I think it's around seven billion. What do we mean by the distribution of an organism? We mean the spread of an organism. Explain the possible impact of temperature due to geographic position on the distribution of species in an ecosystem. Think near or far from the equator. Now, further, from the equator you go, the more variable temperatures. Now, if you've got a more variable temperature, how is that going to affect species movement? Are they going to stay there or are they more likely to move around? It means they're more likely. species to move about or migrate long distances. Explain the possible impact of pollution due to human interaction on the distribution of species in an ecosystem. So let's take water pollution, for example. What does that do to the toxicity of the water? Increases the toxicity of the water. What's that going to do to species within the ecosystem? Species are more likely to move away, migrate out of the ecosystem. 
Now, explain why it's important we try and prevent animals from becoming extinct because it decreases biodiversity, which means there is less interdependence between species. And if you've got less interdependence between species, it means that further changes to the ecosystem run the risk of having a bigger impact or a bigger negative impact on other species too. You can also the, increase the chance of their extinction as well. So that's why biodiversity is important. Well done. So that, folks, is our lesson seven on biodiversity.